Hello and welcome back to Faraday Academy. This is a tutorial series to cover building and deploying APIs and serverless backends to the AWS cloud specifically. So the first video in this series is going to cover Claudia.js and then I'm going to move over to the framework that I most commonly use to deploy these backends, which is the serverless framework. And then finally, we're going to talk about SAM, which is AWS's own open source framework that they created for deploying applications on the AWS cloud and deploying these serverless applications. If you are new to this channel, my name is Gwen and I create lots of content from advice videos to tutorials to doing weekly live streams about all different kinds of programming and software development related topics. So if you're interested in this type of content, then please subscribe to my channel for more. Since this is the first video in the series, I want to go over a little bit about how the serverless application model works. And specifically, I'm going to be using examples from AWS, but these principles apply whether you're deploying to AWS or Google Cloud, Azure, any cloud service that allows for serverless development. There are certainly many applications of serverless development from running jobs that are based off of a clock cycle, such as a weekly cleanup job or running a specific task, such as compressing images. In this series, I'm specifically going to be using examples of how to use serverless architecture as a replacement for a traditional web backend. So serverless development is kind of like a destructured backend. If you've built an application backend before, you know that in general you have everything in one place from the API to all of the rest of the code that runs to make it a working application. Well, in the serverless model, this backend for your system will be built around a compute function or functions. On AWS, these are called Lambda functions and are at the core of a backend application because they provide the logic. Now these Lambda functions are just regular functions that you would write in JavaScript or Python or whatever other language, plus whatever libraries you want to import into that function, they're all bundled together and deployed to AWS Lambda. Then they can be connected with other AWS services. For example, DynamoDB for a database API gateway to take care of the API stage and direct traffic to the AWS Lambda. Any kind of logic or computation occurs. You can use object storage like S3, which can also be connected to the Lambda. Send push notifications through AWS's SNS service or use any number of hundreds of other services and tools available on the AWS platform. So Claudia.js is a very lightweight tool. It does a really good job of deploying, managing, and updating your API and serverless backend. So it will deploy and manage the API gateway service on AWS, as well as Lambda functions that connect to those APIs. And it will handle setting them up so that the API triggers the Lambda and the Lambda can receive all of the data properly. And then through the code you write in the Lambda, you can connect to all of these other AWS services. And perhaps the biggest thing is it allows you to code this infrastructure outside of the AWS console. If you don't know what the AWS console is, it's just the interface that allows you to create and manage AWS resources from your browser. For example, if I wanna create a Lambda function, I can just go through all of these steps and choose the options and write code directly in this AWS console without having to worry about creating a deployment process or doing anything more complicated. It's not a long-term solution, but it is a good way just to get started and try out the AWS platform. But eventually you are going to want to be deploying these from your local environment so you can test them properly, check them into Git, and just have access to them outside of AWS's proprietary cloud environment. So it's always good to have your infrastructure as code somewhere. And Claudia is also great 
for plugging into infrastructure maybe that you just created by clicking through the console. You can start a new Claudia project and just transfer management of that existing infrastructure over to your local development through Claudia. So let's get started with the tutorial. Now there are a few things that you will need to set up before following along here. And the first one is that you need to create an AWS account. So go to aws.amazon.com, follow the steps to create an AWS account. I'm not gonna walk you through them. It's basically filling out the form and confirming your phone number. And then you're gonna have access to be able to use AWS services. If you're worried about payment, AWS has a generous free tier for 12 months. So you can try out most of their major services for free. And also AWS Lambda has a giant free tier in perpetuity. So for practice development and just playing around with it, I really don't see any possible way that you will get charged money, but it will ask you to enter a credit card there. The next thing that you need to do is create a user with programmatic access to your AWS account and save those user credentials locally. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first go to IAM, which is AWS's identity and access management. It's basically the service that lets you set permissions for how users that you create can access services and resources in your AWS account. So we're going to create a new user here and add user. And I'm just going to call it Claudia test. And the important thing here is it's going to need programmatic access with an access key and secret access key to be able to use the SDK or the AWS SDK from our local environment. Now the other option here is AWS management console access, which is basically having a username and password to log in to the web interface. So I'm going to leave it at programmatic access, click next permissions. Now, if you've used AWS before, you might have groups here. And if you have more users or you're doing more, it's good to add groups, but this is just a test account and I'm making a test user. So I'm going to attach policies directly to the user. Now I'm going to use the ones recommended to Claudia. If you're going to be using this in production, you're probably going to want to fine tune permissions to just include the resources within the specific services that you want to access here. I'm going to just broadly say, that this user will get full access to several services with no restrictions. So Lambda, I need Lambda full access, which is this one. And then I'm going to get API gateway full access as well. So API gateway administrator. And I also need the identity and access management policy. So IAM full access, and then I will click next. I don't need any tags, next review. So again, I'm creating a user with programmatic access and attaching these three policies by AWS to have access to Lambda API gateway and IAM. Now, even though I'm going to connect to other services like DynamoDB, I'm not actually deploying or managing them locally. So through Claudia, I'm going to have to create those separately. So the part that I am managing locally are the lambdas that connect to these other services, as well as the API that directs traffic to the Lambda. So I'm going to click create user. And now I get my access key and my secret access key. So the important thing about this screen, is that once I click close, I will never be able to see these keys again. So I have to save them so I can either copy these from here and click show and copy them into a local file. Or what I'm going to do is just download this CSV file and save it locally. And the default name for it is credentials.csv and it should be in your downloads folder. And now I'm going to close this and go into my terminal and log in with these AWS credentials. 
The next step is to configure the AWS CLI on your own machine. I'm going to leave a link to the steps on how to do this below, but basically you will come to this page, go to installing the AWS CLI, and you can choose between version two and version one. Now, as of the recording of this video, version two is still in testing phase and it's not ready for production. So I recommend you install version one and then go to the steps specific to whatever system you are running. So in my case, that would be Mac and then just follow these steps. Now, once the AWS CLI is installed, you should be able to type in which AWS and it will show you a path to where it's located. Next, go to configuring AWS, which basically means you will type in AWS configure in the terminal, and then it will take you through the steps to configure your AWS details and credentials locally. Now, AWS saves this information in a folder inside of your root directory called .aws. And you can see inside this folder, I have a few more files, but the two major files you need to look at are config and credentials. Now inside the config file, you can see the region that you specify for where you are deploying your AWS resources. And then in the credentials file, you can see your access key and secret access key. Now you'll notice the word default here at the top of the file. This is what's called an AWS profile. Now, since there are not any other AWS sets of credentials in this file, these ones just fall under default. But for this tutorial, I'm going to add another set, but you can feel free to save yours under the default profile. And I will show you how to use both later. So I'm going to come into this credentials file and create a new profile, which I'm going to call Claudia. And then I need these two lines. So I'm just going to yank those and paste them. And then I need to get my access key and secret access key that I downloaded earlier. And I'm going to paste them here. and the secret access key. And I will save that. Setting up a custom profile for these demos instead of using the default is of course optional, but it's helpful to know how to do it as you get into AWS development. So I wanted to show you how to do it here. You can leave it as a default profile or create a custom one like the Claudia one I created here. And now we are ready to get started using Claudia.js. Now to get started, globally install Claudia via npm, npm install Claudia-G. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to run it. But once that's installed, find or create a directory where you want to start your project. This is an empty directory I just created, and I'm going to initialize an npm project. Now I will create a single Lambda function in a Lambda.js file. And now I have my package.json and Lambda file. Now I'm going to go into this Lambda file and just paste a basic function. This is the most basic hello world Lambda function just to test Claudia and make sure everything is working. So I will save that. Now that I have my function, I can use the Claudia create command, which will create my AWS resources in my account. And I'm going to pass it some options. So the first option is my profile. If you remember from earlier, when I set up my AWS credentials, I didn't use the default profile. So I do need to specify which profile I'm using, if not the default. The next thing I need to specify is the AWS region which I'm using US East one. And finally, I need to tell Claudia where my Lambda function is. 
So I'm going to specify that with the handler flag. And then the syntax is I have to write the file name and then dot the function name. So my file name is lambda.js and the function name inside of that is handler. So it will be lambda.handler. And now I can hit enter. And this is the response that you should see once your infrastructure has been successfully deployed. You can see that it created a role for the Lambda function, the name of the Lambda function. And if you look in your AWS Lambda console, you can see that it created a Hello Claudia Lambda function here, which matches the package.json name that I had for it. So we can test this Lambda function by typing in Claudia test dash Lambda with the profile information. And you can see the status code is 200 and I got the proper response back. So that's basically how you deploy a bare bones Lambda function to AWS using Claudia JS. I hope you enjoyed the first video in this tutorial series about deploying serverless applications on AWS. In the next video, I'm going to cover a more comprehensive example using Claudia JS again. So please check it out if you're interested in more. Don't forget to like this video, comment and subscribe. And if you like this content, please consider supporting me through Patreon or PayPal donations or by purchasing the book that I published last year about how to learn how to code and land your first job as a developer. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.